Hello and welcome to this tips and tricks video where I'll be talking about how to use the parametric features in Discovery Live. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this on the heatsink sample model. So I'll click to open that. And when I first open this up, it's set up to run a transient thermal. I want to just do this as steady state. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the transient flag there and hit play to just run at steady state. So the scenario I want to consider for this is let's say we have this heat sink and we're trying to optimize the design so that we get the minimum temperature in the heat sink that we can while also minimizing the amount of mass or the amount of volume, let's say, that we're using to build the heat sink. So we want to have the lowest material cost for the heat sink that we can while simultaneously getting as low of a temperature in the heat sink as we can. So I already, if I'm looking at this, have a max temperature chart. So every one of these charts is going to be defined as kind of an output parameter for our parametric study. So I'm going to go ahead and create another chart here that's going to be the total volume. So I hit create and move that down here. So then I'll have both a max temperature and a total volume output parameter. Now, if I don't want to use the parametric features, I could do something like grab the pull tool and look at say, okay, I'm going to grab the height of these different fins here. And I can see, okay, that reduced the max temperature and it increased the total volume. I can make changes like this and try and figure out, you know, what combination gives me the best balance of those two things. Most of the changes I could make will probably have some effect kind of like this, where I'm increasing the volume but decreasing the max temperature. So if I want to do this as a parametric study, I'll need to create some geometric parameters. And the first one I'll create is the height here. Right now, it's measuring from the initial point, which isn't necessarily a convenient point to measure from for this. So what I'm going to do is click that top surface and then click this ruler button and click this surface here and then I'm, I have the entire height of the fin. I'll punch in 20 millimeters for that and you can see this little P button next to it. Uh, that's P for parameter. I can click that and I'll see group 1 was created. So parameters get called groups here. If I click this to make it stay out, I can see, okay, I've got some driving dimensions. Group 1 is 20 millimeters. If I click on that, I could change that to, say, 30, and that'll update in the model. Now I'm going to give it a little clearer name than group 1, so we'll call that height. And then I'm going to make a couple other parameters as well. So one of those is, you know, let's say I want to look at the width of these fins as well. So I'll click here, click that same ruler button, click the opposite side there, and click the P next to that to create another parameter. So we'll call this width. And lastly, I'm going to hit escape a couple times to go back to the select tool, click this top surface, and you can see all these different fins are part of a pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and make the count in this direction another parameter. And one thing I want to check here is that the overall width of the pattern, this 47 or 43.72 millimeters, is locked. So you can see the little padlock next to that. That means when I change the count, this value stays the same and the interval between those fins, so this 14.57 millimeters, that's going to change. So you can see that's unlocked. If I wanted to switch that, I could. If I did switch that so that the interval was locked, I would just get another fin off to the side here, which is not what I want. So I'll leave it as is. I'll make the count a parameter and rename that to count. So here right now I have four. If I switch that to five, you can see, okay, now I have five of those different fins there. And just to test this width parameter, let's say I want that to be five millimeters. 
Okay, so it made that thicker. So all my input parameters here are working. So now I can go ahead and actually create the parametric study. And that's gonna be under add and then parameter study. And when you do that, you'll get a little window here. You can add parameters that you're gonna use in your parameter study. So it's possible to have some that you know, you've created groups that you don't wanna use in the parameter study. I'm gonna use all of them in this case. So to create those, I'll click the plus button and I can either select a driving dimension. So I've got count height and width listed here, or I can select a boundary condition here. So if I wanted to make my heat flow, for instance, a parameter, I could click in this box here and then click on the heat flow. For this model, I'm not gonna make any boundary conditions parameters, but it's good to know that that's an option for you. So instead, I'm gonna pick the count here and let's take that from four to eight, and we can do that in five steps. So go ahead and click add. So here I have four, five, six, seven, eight. And then next, I'll pick the height. Let's take that from 20 millimeters to 40 millimeters. And we can do that in five steps too. So there we've got five millimeter intervals there. If you decide you don't like the number of intervals or the increment in between them, you can click on one of these columns and select edit, and then I can change the number of steps or my range as well. So I'll click one more parameter here, add the width, and let's take that from three to six, and we can do that in four increments. And then the last thing I'll do is hit the all permutations button, and that'll create every different combination of those input parameters that I have. So I have 100 design points here, five times five times four. So I'll go ahead and click start once I'm ready here. And what Discovery Live is gonna do is run through these hundred different design points live. And you can see it changing those values in front of you and simultaneously plotting them in this space here. All right, so now Discovery Live has finished running all the different design points and I can see all of them over here plotted in this window. So I have my total volume on the x-axis and the max temperature on the y-axis. And remember the goal of this whole optimization is to minimize the volume while simultaneously minimizing the temperature. So I wanna move as far to the left as possible to minimize the volume and as far down as possible to minimize the temperature. So looking at some different points here, if I'm comparing say this point and this point uh, this point has both a higher temperature and a higher total volume than this point. So it doesn't really make sense to go with this, this point here. All the kind of optimal designs are going to be on this front edge here where I can decrease my maximum temperature but only by increasing volume or I can decrease my volume but only at the expense of a higher temperature. So those are going to be my different optimal designs. If I want to look at any of these particular designs, I can click on that area, that specific marker, and it'll update the design values here, rerun it, and then I can see what the results look like for that particular design point. It can be also helpful, be helpful to highlight these points in different ways. So if I'm looking at, say, the count, I can see, okay, the low count values are up here in green, the high count values are in red, so a lot of the front edge here is gonna be more fins. So I can see, okay, eight fins is gonna be kind of the ideal number for anything on this point onward. And maybe some lower numbers if I get way out here. So it seems like as we're looking at this that it tends to shift the max temperature down and maybe a little bit to the right. If 
I'm looking at height. This, on the other hand, the high heights are in red here. Low height is in green. And it seems like height just kind of shifts me along the curve, but doesn't put me closer to this edge. So there may not be an optimal value of height. It may be more of something that we just tune to put ourselves in a different position on that curve. And then looking at width, that seems to shift me kind of to the left here. So most of my points here with the on the kind of optimal edge there, uh, this is sometimes called a Pareto front, have a width of three millimeters. So that's my minimum width. So lower width seems to be more efficient there in terms of getting a lower temperature with as little volume as possible. Same thing with a higher count. So having more fins that are narrower seems to kind of be the most efficient thing there. And if I want to look at these particular solutions, you know, maybe I want to keep my temperature below 58 degrees Celsius, then maybe this point is the one I want to look at. And I can mouse over that and see, okay, here's my total volume. My max temperature is 57.2, count is eight, height is 25, and width is three. So I can get a lot of insight from this highlighting and from this data to see how these different input parameters affect my outputs and how that impacts my design. Now, if there's something you want to do with this data that you aren't able to do within Discovery Live, you can also save it out to a CSV file by clicking the Save button right here. Something else to note is that when you save your Discovery Live file, this chart data will get saved even though the results plots here do not in Discovery Live. So you'll be able to look at this and this chart again after closing the file. You can also bring this chart back up if you close it by hitting the chart button. I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for tuning in.